Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining me. This is Christopher Aaron coming to you from the plush but not overly ostentatious iGold Advisor Studios on the 13th of December. This is our weekend update on the price action in gold and silver. And this will be the last presentation before the Fed meeting on Wednesday. A lot of people are very interested in that. So keep in mind, we may have a strong reaction after the Fed meeting. And I want to look at how that may play out here. We are starting today by looking at some news that came out over the last couple of days. A fundamental driver of this market, coin sales for the Silver Eagles, the American produced one ounce silver coin. And we see record demand coming in here around 45 million ounces, up from 44 million last year. So really strong demand coming into the physical market, even at these low prices. This is definitely a sign that we are looking at the formation of a long-term bottom. Although I am a fundamentalist at heart, I do like to let the charts give me more concrete data. The charts really show all of the fundamentals, and that's why I focus on them a lot. Even for manipulated markets, we can learn a lot by looking at where the actual buyers and sellers are coming in. So keep that in mind. I like to bring up these fundamental news items to show how they play out on the charts. One chart that I want to look at today for a little bit of history before we get into the current action on gold and silver is what is called the Dow to gold ratio. And this ratio is really important for a long term perspective, understanding what's happening in the markets. This is the number of ounces of gold that is required to purchase one share in every company in the Dow Jones Industrial Average in the United States. Now, the Dow Jones Industrial Average is composed of 30 of the strongest industrial companies in this country. Companies like uh, Ford, like GE, uh, a number of others, 3M. And this is the number of ounces of gold, again, required to purchase one share in each of those companies. So we can see this ratio has fluctuated very wildly over time. From in the 1920s at the end of the roaring 20s, right before the crash of 29, a high of 17 ounces of gold required to purchase one share in the Dow, down to two during the crash before the Great Recession. So in other words, the Dow lost 85% of its value relative to gold during this crash, all the way up to the upper 20s, 28, 29, in the 1960s, followed by the stagflation that led to the bull market of the 70s in gold, where this ratio came down even lower and hit one on the ratio as gold peaked at 850 $850 an ounce, and the Dow was stuck at 850 So this ratio hit one to one in 1980. All the way back up to in the peak of the NASDAQ bubble, this ratio hitting 43. So where does this leave us here? You can see these really wild swings, but one trend is very clear to me, which is that these highs have been getting higher and these lows have been getting lower. And every final low of the bear market in stocks as priced in gold has been coming at least below two, if not below one. So we are right up here today, still above 15 on this ratio. And my thesis is that this ratio is going to come back down to the vicinity of one. Now, this could happen in a number of ways. This could happen by, for example, 
the Dow staying where it is, let's say falling slightly to 15,000, and the price of gold rising to 15,000, that would produce a one to one ratio. Or this could happen by the price of gold, let's say, doubling to 2,000, and the price of the Dow crashing all the way from where it is to 2,000. And I know both of these examples seem extreme, but there are these historical precedents for the end of the gold bull market to reach these levels. And yes, history does not always follow exactly the same path, but it often rhymes very strongly, especially when you're looking at these 100-year charts. So this is something to keep in mind as we go along. Why am I bringing this up? Because when we're looking at the Dow, this is really an ugly looking chart here. This is um, looks to me like a very broad, long term topping pattern that is put into place. And I'm not so interested in calling the actual top in the Dow like a lot of commentators are. They like to say, oh, I picked the exact day in May or um, March when it hit the single high. That's nice, but that doesn't really do a whole lot for me. I'm really more concerned with looking at the broad trends that are developing that are allow me that are going to allow me and you to make money over the course of the next 5, 10 or 20 years. So we're looking at the Dow and we're saying that if this is topping in here in this region, and gold is forming a bottom, these two numbers are going to be coming together. The Dow right now at 17.3 and gold just above 1,000. The two numbers are going to be meeting at some point over the next 10 years. Looking at where we are on the Dow to gold over the last 35 years, Zooming in, this actually being the gold to Dow ratio, it's just plotted inversely. And this just helps me to see where we are when viewing it from the opposite metric. So how many shares in the Dow does it take to buy one ounce of gold? And you can see that peak right here in 1980, like I said, one to one. And where are we right now? All the way down here. So there is so much room for gold to gain and the Dow to fall over the course of the next 5, 10, or 20 years. This is really a long-term theme that we're looking at. And I'm going to zoom in to this window right here. We're trying to get a sense of when the ratio will actually start turning back up. So this orange box right here is what I'm going to zoom into on the next chart down here near the lows, remember this near 0 0.05. Let's zoom into that. And we're looking at the last three years on the gold to Dow ratio. It's forming this similar pattern that the precious metals are forming, which is this wedge pattern. And you can very clearly see it defined here. All these hits shown in red on the top trend line and these hits in green on the bottom and as these lines converged, you had this breakout right here in September. And notice, yes, the ratio came back down in favor of the Dow, but it has bounced right here at the upper trend line. This represents a retest of the breakout from this wedge pattern in the gold to Dow ratio. And it looks to me very strongly, you can see that break there and that retest. It looks to me very strongly like the next move is for this ratio to start moving away from this wedge pattern. That tends to be what happens when we break these wedge patterns. So keep in mind this y-axis here that we're looking at currently at 0 0.06 and as this begins to move away keep in mind what we said about the long-term picture 
I expect this ratio to reach 1. So there is a ton of room here for gold to rise and or for the Dow to fall in relative terms. Turning now our attention to gold over the last few days, there's been a lot of consolidation and what's really happening, what you're seeing here is indecision in the gold market before the Fed meeting. So it's almost just like everyone who's participating is not willing to take a side yet until they hear what the Fed is doing. It's a little perverse because the entire markets are really basing themselves on what a private group of bankers decide to do, but that's the situation we find ourselves in today. I predict that eventually that will change as the markets begin to, to function on their own. But we're looking at this back and forth action in the price of gold, not ready to move in either direction. So looking at that over the six month time frame, again, we are looking at this new low that formed here, still below this double black line, which is our horizontal support and resistance line. For anyone that's new, this key you will become familiar with because we keep this the same every time. A lot of people like to put a ton of indicators on their charts. I personally feel that more is not better. I like to use the ones that really work for me. And I think these will work for some other people out there. So I hope this makes sense to you. This new low here in gold. Now we're looking at the gold miners again, the GDX gold mining fund and not making a new low still still holding above the lows from July and August for the gold mining complex. So this early warning signal that this move lower in gold may be the final one is still valid. Looking at the two year downtrend again, just quickly, we look at this chart often, so I won't spend too much time with it. Just a very clear primary downtrend that we're in for gold. And we do still have some potential lower targets, including 990 an ounce. Targets, of course, being guidelines. It's never a 100% crystal ball, but it is a map of reasonable probabilities. If we make enough reasonable probabilities, we have a much better chance of positioning ourselves as the moves occur. Looking at this from the 30 year, the 35 year time frame, here is that support zone that we're talking about. We've been mentioning this for a number of weeks. We are just hitting that now where I expect the final low to come in gold somewhere in this vicinity. And this will represent an immense opportunity for a long term move that is to come. Just quickly, we're looking at the gold miners here over the last seven years. Look at this volume coming in. Compare this to the volume from the highs in the gold miners from, you know, from 2009, 2010, 2011, as the sector was topping out. Look at this volume coming in. You're talking a, a market that has moved from somewhere on average of 20 million shares traded per day up to boy that average has got to be somewhere around 80 to 90 million so there is some significant positioning happening here in these gold mining companies guys what you're watching is what is known as smart money this is long-term accumulation happening in this entire sector for a move that is anticipated to unfold over the course of the next five to 10, really perhaps even longer than that number of years. This is the positioning. You're seeing that right here in the volume. And here we're looking at the GDX relative to the S&P 500, the large cap US stock index. And we're seeing that, yes, even as it's moved down within these channels, it has actually 
broken its downtrend relative to the S&P 500. So it's bottoming out relative to the broad stock market. Just another indicator that I sometimes keep my eyes on. Looking at silver, as we always do, a little bit more weakness coming here in silver compared to gold, falling by a few cents uh, toward the close of the day on Friday. And just looking at this from the six month perspective, we can see that slight new low right down here. Slightly lower than the August uh, low. Let's compare that to the strongest silver miner, silver Wheaton, that is a proprietary indicator that I follow this ratio between silver Wheaton and silver. And we're seeing this short term uptrend still holding in silver Wheaton with a lot of these turquoise broken downtrend lines. So again, the silver miner showing a similar signal as those gold miners were a few slides ago, indicating that perhaps this weakness in silver that we're seeing is not going to last too much longer. That's what the signal tends to mean. It's a leading indicator. And we're zooming in here on silver over the last nine months. This is a pretty close zoom. And just look at these, these lows coming in here right below the $14 level. You can see these lows just coming down a little bit, a little bit more, a little bit more on Friday. Really lacking a whole lot of conviction though, a whole lot of follow through selling. So these are nominal new lows that we're seeing in silver. Compare that to the, the breakdowns that you would see in 2011 when silver dropped from the 40s down to 25 in the matter of two weeks. And then it dropped from uh, the 30s down to 22 in the matter of a week or two. And even this drop, when it dropped down from 22 down to 16 over the course of a couple weeks, you're not seeing that you're not seeing that massive selling coming in as these new lows are forming. So it's just another sign that this wedge, again, we're looking at this wedge pattern for silver, similar to the Dow to gold ratio that we were looking at. It's signs that the selling is becoming exhausted. And if you are still in this market, and if you're still watching this video right now, you must be one of the people that has decided to be a long-term holder of silver. You must be. There's no other reason for you to watch this at this point. Most people who were buying silver in 2010, 2011, and even maybe 2012 have gotten flushed out of the market. They are no longer here. These, these were the hot buyers, the Johnny come latelys, as you might call them, that were buying around the highs and that had no historical perspective for what a low would look like as it's forming. So if you're still here, if you're still in this market, we are approaching something that will result in a trend change over the course of the next six to 12 months here, probably sooner rather than later. It's not there yet. So I hate to sound like a broken record, but the movement has not been very strong recently. However, that's exactly what a bottom would look like as it's forming. So we're watching and when I see this break, I will be bringing that action to you and that will give us a very strong indicator that the final low is very, very near. Looking at silver over the last 35 years, very quickly, once again, here is the position that we find ourselves in on this long-term linear uptrend line these price spikes happening as new waves of investors enter the market. And based on that first article that we looked at today on the Silver Eagle sales, you can see the backdrop for that forming right now at the lows. New investors entering the market every few years. Thank you for sticking with me all the way. Just to wrap this up, 
The markets are pausing before the Fed meeting on Wednesday. I don't expect to see anything too dramatic until Wednesday. I believe 2.15 is when they release their interest rate decision. Long-term lows are forming by wearing people out. And if you're still here, it pretty much means that you have not allowed yourself to get worn out by this market. And you're watching the low come into place as a result of that. We have these strong early indicator signals from the mining sector. We're always keeping at least one eye on those signals. And finally, before the meeting on, on Wednesday, and when you look at the price action on Wednesday, and I will have the next update Wednesday evening, uh, but as you watch the price action, let's say after the, the meeting and before I post my next update, don't put too much weight into the immediate post-Fed action because these long-term bottoms that we're watching form will not be affected even if there's a quick drop or a quick spike either way. These are long-term bottoms that are being put into place by the market and there can often be short-term really wild gyrations in the market right after the Fed meeting. So anyway, don't let that get the better of you and keep your eyes on the prize. Thank you again for watching. This has been Christopher Aaron from iGold Advisor. Have a nice Sunday evening, everyone, and I will see you on Wednesday.